Government. Um, what its response is to the statement by COSLA expressing Council leaders' extreme disappointment with the proposed budget settlement for local government and its presentation lacking consistency with her partnership approach and their invitation to the Deputy First Minister to attend a special meeting. Cabinet Secretary John Swinney. Officer, despite the spectacularly difficult current fiscal context, the Scottish Government has increased the resources available to local government next year by over £570 million. I have also invited Council leaders to work with us and other partners to design our services around the needs and interests of the people and communities of Scotland. That is how we will deliver sustainable public services in partnership. In addition to funding from the Scottish Government, local authorities enjoy a range of revenue-raising powers that are not available to other public services, including newly devolved powers over empty property rates relief. Mark Griffin. Thank you, President Officer. I didn't hear very clearly whether the Cabinet Secretary had agreed to join that special meeting with, with COSLA leaders, but hopefully that can be um, clarified next, because the Government's claim on Thursday that local government would get half a billion pounds um, promoting a partnership approach unravelled within hours, and as I said at the time, little more than smoke uh, and mirrors. The response from COSLA leaders, unanimously across all parties, and most significantly council leaders from the Deputy First Minister's own party was that this is another massive real terms cut in Council's core funding and will lead to socially harmful job losses and that can't be taken more seriously. Services, as we know, will cease to exist and asked the Cabinet Secretary on Thursday if he had assessed the cost to the NHS of cutting those preventative services and he didn't provide an answer. So again, what's left to cut? Where is the impact assessment of what this austerity will do to the rest of Scotland's public services? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, the, the, the proper comparison of budgets, which Parliament expects of me as the Acting Finance Minister, is from one budget to the next budget. And last year's budget to this year's budget, the local government finance settlement is increased by £570 million. Local government asked me, in the dialogue I had before the budget statement, for an increase in their budget allocation of a billion pounds. And I was quite clear with local government that a billion pounds could not be delivered in the current fiscal context, but local government was expecting a flat cash settlement. They expected no more money. That's what they were encouraged to believe from the resource spending view, of no more money this year, uh, next year compared to this year. But in fact, I've delivered £570 million more. I think that's a welcome settlement for local government. Mark Griffin. Still no answer on the wider impact on Scotland's public sector landscape of these cuts. But on, on Sunday, I heard the Deputy First Minister's comments about the need for reform and wonder where this government has been for the last decade. Councils have been salami slicing in the face of 10 years of real terms cuts. In the days of salami slicing are over, presiding officer. It's now wholesale cuts, services ended. Officials in SNP-run Aberdeen City Council have started looking at everything the council does. Social work, council tax collection, free school meals, dog control, health and safety, even the welfare fund. It could all be privatised. It could all be outsourced. Given what Aberdeen is considering, along with all other councils, isn't it the case that this budget has not been used to reform, it has been used to dismantle local government? Cabinet Secretary. It, no, it has been designed to create sustainable public services with an increase in the local government budget, which was not expected, but has in fact increased by £570 million. Now, I have offered local authorities the opportunity to be partners in how we take forward the reform of the public sector. That was exactly what I did when we designed the COVID recovery strategy. The COVID recovery strategy was agreed with local government, and I look forward to building on that as we take forward the local government settlement, which I stress is £570 million higher than local authorities were expecting. <laughs> 